Hey, we're looking at programming languages in this video, just formal constructed languages designed to communicate instructions to a machine. And a key concept for this topic is abstraction. And I like to introduce this by sort of showing a spectrum of the types of languages we're going to look at. And in this end, the right hand side is representing for most abstracted languages. And this end, the left hand side is representing the least. And the very least abstracted language we're going to talk about is machine code. And machine code is just pure binary, so zeros and ones. And this is the closest to what's actually going on on a computer because it in a computer, it's just electricity on and off, basically, um, two voltage levels um, representing one and zero. So pure binary is as close as we're going to get to what's actually happening, so it's the least abstracted. We then have assembly code, which is a class of languages which is more abstracted, but just a little bit, and together this category is low level. So just, just machine code and assembly code forms the low level category. We then have high level, where there's much more range, I suppose, and high level is what you would have done your coursework in. It's for languages like C, Java, Python, and then pseudocode and just normal languages aren't, but I wanted to put them on just for comparison, because hopefully you can see the abstraction. So Python, for example, is very high level. You don't have to do things like declare variables. Java is slightly lower because you have to do things like specify the data type and so on, and then C, you can do pretty much anything you want in terms of like memory management and so on. So there is abstraction within the high level as we'll talk about, but this is just a nice introduction, hopefully. So an example of machine code is just zeros and ones, as I said. An assembly might be a very simple instruction like this. It doesn't make a lot of sense, really, and you're dealing with registers, and then this might just be incrementing a variable. So yeah, let's expand on this. Let's focus on low level first then, and machine code specifically, which has, as I say, the least abstraction. It's representing directly what's happening within a computer, pretty much. and in the very first definition, which I read very quickly, about a programming language interacting or communicating instructions to a computer, processors can execute machine code directly, of course, in the actual format uh, in terms of voltage. So machine code is what computers actually run. Everything else, assembly and high-level code, must be translated to machine code for it to be executed on a computer. Executing meaning to run the code. And the first really important point here is that machine code is specific to a processor or a family of processors. So you can think of it in terms of an Intel machine code or an AMD machine code. It's more complicated than that in terms of it goes to the individual processors and different architectures and so on. But essentially it's specific to whatever you've got inside your laptop or iPad or computer. So it's not portable at all. High level code can run on any computer if you've got the right translator. The machine code has to be written directly for a single processor pretty much. And this corresponds to its instruction set. An instruction set is quite a broad term, but basically it's for what is the instruction, like what the instruction does, like addition or loading something or branching or moving to some other part of the code. And it will have a machine code representation. And then you also have an assembly code representation as well. Essentially, an instruction set is the computer can look up 0001 as an add instruction, basically. And it won't be the same for every processor, so running the same machine code on a different computer won't work. So writing machine code is just not feasible really, so we need a slightly more abstracted language, i.e. assembly. And assembly is not a single language, it's, it's a whole group. So they're still low level but slightly more abstracted. And they use words basically, which is why they're much more useful. Specifically mnemonics, i.e. ways to remember an operation. And a key thing to mention is they're also specific to hardware, so very different assembly languages for different processors but they're very similar, there's just small syntactical differences. And crucially, the reason why they're called low-level is they have this one-to-one -one or mostly one-to-one -one relationship with machine code. And mostly, you can kind of ignore, it's always good to qualify it because there are some exceptions, which we won't go into because it's not hugely relevant, but it's pretty much one-to-one. -one. Whereas a single high-level statement might correspond to loads of smaller operations. But basically, an instruction at its core is represented by an operator, which is kind of telling you what you're doing, and an operand, which is your data. So here's an example instruction written in assembly language. This is adding 10 to the register R2. And in machine code, this has this one-to-one -one relationship, i.e. the operator can be looked up in the instruction set and be represented in binary, and then the data can follow it and be represented too. This may also, if you ever see this in an exam, because binary is so much longer, this is just a, a smaller example, hexadecimal is often used to represent machine code, although still that can be very long. And an assembler is the translator that translates this one-to-one -one statement into machine code. So high-level languages are much more like ordinary languages and are far easier to use, but they still have a strict syntax, as you would appreciate. So examples are C++, Python, Ruby, and so on. And the high-level nature is to do with abstraction, not to do with how hard it is. But that's not really relevant. Difficulty doesn't come into it. That's a little misconception. 
that people often have. An important aspect of them is that they're portable, meaning they can be executed on many computers. So you don't need to write hardware specific code like you do for low level languages, i.e. writing it directly for an Intel da -da -da processor. It's the job of a translator to bridge the gap, essentially. But as a programmer, we don't have to worry about it. So not all languages are equal. Within the high-level category, some are more abstract than others. So there are various constructs in the less abstract ones, which are still high-level, which certain constructs you may not have heard about if you've done something like Python or Ruby, which is quite abstract compared to maybe C. So the more abstract languages leave more work to be done at runtime. So the translator's got more things to do, essentially. So it's, they can be a lot slower to execute for the same instruction. Because with less abstract, you can do your own optimizations. You can make code very compact.